Hi, and welcome back to our weekly Orboot and Risk Five hacking stream. So let's dive right into it. Uh, today we are going to talk about something called Xtask again, uh, which you may recall from one of the previous streams. And what we want to do is we want to improve or uh, actually um, get our setup to that point where uh, we can actually use Xtask to build our project now. So if you recall in the um, previous streams, we were always using a simple make file that I wrote for building our current code. And that was, well, um, nice nice and well, but only suitable for building a single stage in our boot. Uh, but what we actually need to do is we need to have multiple stages, uh, as we also sketched last time. Um, and then we would need to have some richer tooling for doing so. Um, and with that, uh, Let's almost dive right into it, but first up, uh, I've got some news again. So uh, let's have a look at uh, my web browser here. So first up, um, I've attended the uh, last week's RISC-V DevWords program meeting, and they uh, just announced another DevBoard, which is now available for the program, which is the ISV uh, from QWERTY. And that is featuring an FPGA, an ICE 40 FPGA. It's not too huge. It's got 5,000 lookup tables. So people are familiar with FPGAs know what this is about. Um, you can sort of think of like a capacity of how much you can put in there, uh, very roughly speaking. Um, and it also features an ESP32. So that's a very, very famous microcontroller from Espressive. Um, and this year specifically is the C3. So the C series from ESP32 is the RISC-V series. They also have a different instruction set. Uh, that would be the ESP32S. Um, well, the ESP32C is uh, RISC-V. So yeah, it could be quite an interesting board. Um, if you click on info here, uh, you will see uh, this page here where uh, they did an interview. Uh, on group gets uh, with the creators of that board and well scrolling further down um, they're explaining like how they de how they designed this uh, what the idea was and so on um, yeah it might be quite interesting um, i'm not going too deep into this right now but i will put the link again in the notes so you can read up on it and another meeting i just attended was uh, that's also a regular meeting um, there is a open hours uh, meeting and the open hours meeting uh, is like where you know many people from the risk five community meet and uh, talk and exchange about you know uh, everything they encountered they're experimenting with and so on and somebody today introduced uh, me to the room project i hadn't heard of this before and this again ties into fpga so uh, room is a processor implementation for a risk five sock um, I haven't really read too much about that because the meeting was actually just like two hours ago. <laughs> um, but if you uh, want to know about it, I will also put that link again in the notes. Uh, it's here on Moonbase Otago on, on GitHub. So that's moonbaseotago.github.io, one, one word. Um, and they have, a, a, apparently they have given a talk at some point this year, architectural talk, so you can click on that and dive through the slides, which is uh, essentially like describing the project goals uh, roughly where they are. Uh, but I think it's uh, from uh, quite a while ago, maybe some months or something. Um, though there are some newer uh, posts here in the blog, like this one here from end of August, or uh, this one here, uh, not even that long ago from 1st of October. So that's just been like three and a half weeks since then. So yeah. Um, quite some interesting stuff uh by the way this year is uh, running on an aws instance actually so on aws apparently uh, you can also uh, get some machines uh, which are just hosting fpgas i don't know how that works i haven't tried it myself yet but yeah it also sounded quite interesting so yeah aws if you don't know it it's the uh, amazon web services uh, thing where you know you can just rent servers or uh, use cloud resources and stuff like that and apparently FPGAs so yeah and with that um, 
back to our project here. So what, what we see here currently is on the left hand side, I just have my uh, regular terminal where I just built our project and on the right hand side, I have our uh, serial port. So this is where we see the output from the Vision 5 port that we're working with. And so what we just see is the output of me just you know running um, our code uh, from DRAM now on the board. So yeah, I, I just did this here. Well, not from DRAM, from SRAM, I'm sorry. So yeah, in, in the make file, I currently just say make run. Um, yeah, I pass the uh, path to the serial that we're using for communicating with the board. And then it would do the X modem transfer and all the dance and then run our code and we see the output here. So yeah, let's just do that another time now for the sake of the example. So yeah, I just ran the make uh, command and now I'm hitting the uh, boot mode button and reset on the Vision 5 board. And now you see the transfer is starting. And when that is done, we will see there our boot, the crab and everything else. Yeah, I just, um, uh, I, I just uh, hit reset and the boot mode button again so it wouldn't continue um, because yeah this is uh, so what we see here is from the first stage that we have in our boot right so everything up until here and this next bit here that is something that we just loaded from the spy flash so it's currently outside of our code base and so if you recall from uh, from last time where we did the sketch uh, what we actually want to have is uh, we want to have a setup which can build all the different stages that we need in that board for us. And for that, uh, we want to use something called Xtask. So let's head over here and let's just look at the directory listing. So this here is the root level of the Orboot project. And so in that, uh, we have something called Xtask, this directory here. And within that directory, we have a cargo toml file and a source directory, just like with a regular Rust project, right? And within that again, um, well, we have a main.rs just by convention being our main entry point. And then we have a few modules, one for the star five, uh, well, uh, vendor in this case. So we always start with vendor and then we have the respective board. And Sunchi, that was the, uh, so the vendor from which we already had an implementation in our boot. And so today, we want to extend what we have in the star five directory. So yeah, we look at this here, uh, the vi vision 51.rs And just uh, for comparison, let's also look at the Sunji directory. And here we say uh, for the nerd jar, we already had quite some code. So this here is like 16 K lines of code. And this is where the different tasks for building everything and so on is defined. Um, Whereas in, well, the vision 51.rs, that's only 75 bytes. Uh, essentially, it's just saying, hey, uh, this is the vision 5. So how do we run this? Um, we can just say cargo x task. And now we need to uh, give it a target. We would say build, I think, or make. Oh, it's actually make. And then we would uh, point to the main board, right? And the main board would always be vendor slash board name. So yeah, while we do this now, what happens is we see everything nice and running. And then, well, I, th I think we just print something on the serial or something uh, like the standard out in this case. Um, yeah, it's, it's not done yet because it's building everything in, uh, in the X task module here. So you can uh, right. Yeah, actually, we are not even outputting anything yet. So yeah, let's actually start with that right away. So what I'm going to open now is the um, X task source star five vision one dot RS. Well, and here we have uh, quite some. Uh, <laughs> this is quite empty, actually, right? So yeah, for comparison, this here is what we have for the nerd job. Um, quite some stuff. So we're using a bunch of uh, other utilities and doing this here. So the first thing I want to put in here is uh, this year, I just want to print something. So we're going to use the info macro. 
And now let's just print like uh, building vision 5.1. And now I just want to see for comparison what we get here. And whoopsie, we already see this macro actually uh, is not in our scope yet. So let's see where we find it. Uh, we take it from the log crate. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. We're also going to have a few other uh, handy functions. So one is trace. And another one is error. So error is what we can use for, you know, when we encounter a condition um, in our, our build uh, code uh, that is not uh, able to resolve or something, then we can print an error. Um, yeah, it, I don't know. It could be like um, if you, uh, I don't know, if you specify additional features which are not defined or, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, and the trace utility is more like for uh, finer granularity. So yeah, um, let's run this again. And now we should actually see some output, right? So we should see a line, which is very much like a Hello World program. It's just within the XTAS framework. And we should just see building vision 5.1. And do we actually see anything? I don't see anything, uh, but we do get a bunch of warnings up here. That doesn't really matter too much right now. Um, yeah, so why are we not seeing anything? Um, let's see. So what should happen? What should happen would be uh, this function here should be invoked. Execute command. Um, maybe. It could also be that I'm mistaking the info macro and it's actually for something else. It could be that it's actually the trace macro that we need to use after all. Let's just figure that out very quickly. Say trace and run again. Yeah, it always takes a while to compile everything. Um, yeah. All right, and we still don't see anything. So um, let's see how far we actually get. So first of all, uh, when, when we see this file name here, uh, and that's even included in the build, so we, you know, let's uh, hide this again. So we do see that this file is compiled, so that looks okay so far. And we have this function here, execute command, and that should actually be executed. So let's do the following. Um, let's uh, change the uh, ordering here a bit and I will open another file, which is our main.rs and the main.rs file here. So this is now the main entry point for Xtask. So this is what should at some point jump to running execute command. So do we have this here? Right, so we have target.execute command and then it should pass on some arguments. And do we have this? Ah, we can actually print our arguments, right? So, and we can also print some information on our target, like, um, let's see here. So yeah, this is uh, how we define our target. So depending on the main board that we have and the variant. Uh, so in, in our case, currently for the Vision 5, we don't have variants, but if we had some, um, yeah, then well, this is how we would decide on the target. And so let's just print out those values here uh, using the info util. So we say info. Well, uh, now we just do this here. And let's see what we get here. So first of all, it says not in scope. That is something we can fix. So we get it from here, from the log crate. We get error, we get info. And now Rust is complaining about something again. Um, it says cannot be formatted with a default formatter. So what do we do? We just say colon question mark. Yeah, and that usually works. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see again, cargo X task. And 
what do we get? So uh, when we started setting this up, um, I recall that uh, you know when we were saying uh, no, we would use a main board that is uh, not even defined, we would actually get an error, right? Like if we remove the one here, for example. So yeah, as you can see, it says can decide ha uh, a target for task. So yeah, this here in contrast um, should get us something, but we're not seeing any output. So it looks like we're not even getting here, right? So yeah, let's um, let's put something further above here. Uh, yeah, let's let's put our info here. Let's see what we get this time. Yeah, I need to compile again. And what do we see? Well, hopefully something, but it looks still quite empty. So yeah, it's a, it's a good question what is happening here. So yeah, um, this here is where we build up the logger. Here we say info. Maybe, maybe we should actually say trace here. Yeah, of course we need to have it in scope. And we also put trace here. Sorry, let's see what we get now. And it looks like it's uh, doing nothing. Um, it could be because of that V flag that I put here at some point. I'm actually not even sure why I put that there. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't look like that made a difference here. I guess I thought it would be more verbose or something. Um, so let's figure this out. So first of all, um, we saw this here happening, right? So when we got an error, we could see can't decide target for task. So we definitely do get output if we want. So maybe, um, maybe there is a way to actually uh, increase the log level or something. Could be that you know trace info logs are actually not um, being printed by default. Although I would actually expect info to be printed. Um, let's see. So we have this here, logger, and it says args that verbose so log level filter, right? So yeah, that should tell us how. Ah, interesting. So this is coming from clap, and that would tell us the verbosity. Uh, let's see how that works. So clap verbosity. So easily add a dash dash verbose flag to CLIs using clap. Um, yeah, so dash V is for showing, oh, look at this. We just needed to add another V and then triple V for debugging and quad V for tracing. Or if we just say uh, we want to print a warning, uh, we would use a single V. Yeah, uh, that's, this is actually uh, quite common. So in, in different uh, logging utilities and environments, uh, you know, you, you would have these different uh, levels. So your yeah, warnings are supposed to be fixed at some point and info, debug, they should actually help with debugging. I think it's a bit debatable which one is more important, info or warnings. Um, anyway, uh, let's just pass another V and now we should actually see our info being printed. And I guess we actually did make it uh, through all the all along, but um, didn't just see anything because we were missing another V. And here we go. Nice. So yeah, we got this here. Uh, well, we got it twice because we actually did print it twice. And we're saying building vision five. 
but that thing we only see once because we're doing one info and one trace print. So yeah, um, yeah, we, we can we can go with info for now. We we can still re rework that at some point. Um, yeah, I just want to remove this here now because this should actually be clear, uh, and we shouldn't really need to deal with that. So yeah, with that. Um, now we can proceed. Now we need to decide on uh, what commands actually to run precisely. So uh, for that, we're going to evaluate the arguments a bit more. And we are going to have at least two target traits. So uh, we want to be able to build the binary. Um, and then second, we also want to be able to run the binary on the board. And for running the binary, we would need to build first and then use the uh, utilities for um, talking to the uh, to the board and then uh, running it. So yeah, we will just use the right hand side here for orientation that was for the NERJAR. And so let's see. Um, first of all, uh, we should have something like this year. Uh, we would have a function like x task build. Well, um, now in our case, the so this here is referencing the SOC. So instead of D1, we would say JH7100 because what we're uh, building is more specific to the SOC. Um, and so for this, uh, we now build something called BT0. Um, yeah, let's actually do it that way first. We, we can always expand later, right? So yeah, what else do we do? Uh, we pass on the arguments and the features. Yeah, features is not too important right now. We will get back to that later. Um, that's for like, I don't know, if you want to opt out of SBI, for example, you only want to uh, have machine mode and start from machine mode and your operating system would be holistically providing its own SBI, for example. Uh, that's where we could have a feature flag um, or some, some other things. So yeah, um, yeah, but before we uh, get there, we actually want to depend on the command. So we're going to do this here and this. So we match the command that we get so when we get the make command, then we want to run this task. And if we get any other command, well, we can just, we can just error and say, error command not implemented. And well, do we want to pass the command? Well, we can do so. We can just say args command here and put it in here. All right, now we need to end the match statement. And here we go. Of course, that won't just work. So first of all, uh, we need to import our command from the crate. So this is a uh, what we define ourselves in our boot. Um, yeah, env and memory is currently not necessary. So yeah, let me just remove that right away. Um, and now we see this here, uh, cannot be formatted with a default formatter. I think we need to do this here. Uh, no, that doesn't work. So yeah, we're just going to say, call on question mark again, because that's mostly what works. Oh, but it also doesn't have a debug thing. That is interesting. Uh oh. So yeah, let's actually look at what commands is. So um, this is coming from the current crate. Uh, so that is from here somewhere. I think it's coming from target or something, um, or it would be coming from mod. Oh, let's actually see. 
Uh, yeah, let's, let's have a quick look here. So do we define something like memory here? No, we don't. Then I suspect it's actually specific to the vendor or something. Do we define it here? No. Actually, we wanted to search for a command. So it's not, it's not here. Um, okay. Time for rip grab. So that's RG for commands in X task. And it's coming from access source main. Okay. So yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> let's look at this after all. Um, so where does commands come from? So it's an enum. And so we, we want to derive something, right? So we want to derive like, uh, debug and just do this here. Now it's happy. And now this here, of course, would like to have a function definition. So yeah, we're going to do this. Say fn. And now we need the signature. So yeah, we can actually copy that here. So let's just look at uh, this here for the example. So we have, so features is just a, a string vector as you can see. And the other one, env, is again something which is coming from our crate. Oh, we actually had that in here. Now we know what it's for. So this here, env. So uh, what is env for? Um, we can look a bit like, oh, look, this is for, uh, for the environment to build for, I guess. So there is this uh, release flag, for example. Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, the, the first thing uh, we need to do is uh, we now need to define a command to run. And the uh, command is essentially the cargo command. So we're now, uh, we're now writing some code in Rust that we actually run with cargo. But within that, we call cargo again for a specific sub project now. So for the specific uh, vendor and for the specific main board, uh, we now run another instance of cargo for each of the different stages that we uh, implement for that board. And now we're just uh, implementing the specific task for those stages. So we can do this here. Um, essentially, this is some boilerplate code that we would always need to do. Uh, so yeah, up until here, Do we actually have anything so far which is, huh, interesting. So far it looks like we can just copy the entire function. Uh, might be a good candidate for refactoring at some point. So let's do that right away. Um, but we're saying jh, jh, seven, one hundred. And now we need a few more things. So uh, first of all, hey, why is it complaining about n? Uh, undeclared, oh, right. So there is some more env that we need to use. std env, oh, right. So this here is now for, I guess, environment variables. Uh, so yeah, we're going to use std env. Now this here is happy again. Um, now we need the command thing where does command come from so that comes from process so yeah this is also from the uh, std library so we're now writing code for the operating system right so uh, this is in a hosted environment uh, and this is where we can use everything from std so with within the rboot code itself we cannot do this but the uh, utilities that we're running on the host system for building our binaries and so on 
this is where we actually do have a std environment. So yeah, nice. Um, now there is just one thing uh, that we still need, and that is board project root. And where does that come from? Well, uh, another uh, candidate for refactoring, maybe, because this here could be very generic. Um, well, let's just let's just copy it for now. So in our case, this is now star five star five. Version five one. Factor out, rework, share. So yeah, this is definitely a fix me. Now there is another helper function here called project root. Where does that come from again? Uh, oh look, that is already a helper uh, that we did factor out. Sorry, I look here. Let's make this larger. So we can use it from our crate. And right, so now we got that part. Um, so let's, let's, actually, let's actually see what happens when we do this now. So uh, we're gonna add another, another V because we want to see the trace. So yeah, for that, we're gonna use four Vs and yeah, we're invoking the make command, right? So when we run the make command, we should actually now see the whole thing running through. Uh, and let's see if that actually happens. So if that happens, we should then see another compilation step where it's actually invoking cargo again for the subdirectory. And look at that, that actually happened. Um, but we got a bit of a whoopsie um, because the linker is now saying, whoops, you're overflowing. And why is that happening? Well because we're not building a release um, we're building a debug build and with the debug build um, well the binary is getting too large for our SRAM so our SRAM if you remember is just 16k um, that's not much uh, and we can actually just say uh, dash dash release here to squeeze down the binary and here we go so now um, it actually ran this year. So it, it tried to build this. Uh, so the code in our actual mainboard directory, right? So this here is mainboard, star five, vision five, one, BT zero. So it's compiling uh, some files in that. I had already compiled something, so it didn't actually need to rebuild anything, uh, but we can provoke that uh, very easily. So I would just, um, yeah, I would just open another window. I will actually go to the star five vision five BT zero directory. And now let's say we make a change here in main.rs. I know something stupid like, um, yeah, let's just, let's just print another crab here. So now we have two crabs. Uh, which means we just changed the code. And now when we run this again, um, it should have been compiling again. Uh, did it though? Um, we can check that by looking at the target something release. So do we see anything here, uh, which is our bt0.bin file. So this year is from just today, so October 26, but this is from quite a while ago. So this hasn't been rebuilt, um, but this year, this year actually has, right? So this is from like a minute ago. So that worked. It's just that um, this file hasn't been touched. Um, Right, so that's something we still got to figure out. And at some point we should also figure out what we have this year. Um, anyway, so yeah, this uh, this file uh, would result from doing an opsh copy. And the opsh copy hasn't actually yet happened. So if you look at this here, um, so for the D1, we actually have a few more functions that we're running. Like here we have a build step and now here we have a binary step. 
and this binary step, well, that is essentially doing option copy, just like we want to do now. It's, uh, you know, stripping a few things and then outputting a binary, which uh, has this name here. And what we're going to do is we're just doing the same thing, except with a different binary name. And so once again, we can essentially copy the whole function. Uh, we're just going to change the name for it. And let's just put it below here. So yeah, instead of D1, we call it JH7100. And now here, well, we also have flash in here. Um, I didn't do that here. I actually didn't want to do that for uh, reasons um, because we have these two possibilities, right? So we can build the binary for the flash. If we do so, we need to prepend it with um, this uh, four byte uh, size information. So yeah, we, we could make another function which is called xtask build jh7100 flash bt0 and that would just invoke this function here um, and then do the prepend step and uh, with that, um, you know, build this here in a bit of a different manner. Um, but yeah, let's, let's start with this here for now. So yeah, we would just remain this here instead of orboot nerja, uh, we call it orboot, well, vision 5.1. And so now we call this function again here. And we're passing the exact same arguments, arcs and features. Whoopsie doopsie, it's a bit unhappy. Um, yeah, that's actually not the arguments we need. We need the bin utils prefix. Oh, and look at that. So yeah. Where do we get bin utils from now? So the bin utils are to be found using this helper function, find bin utils. And, sorry. Now, how do we find the bin utils? Um, or where did we find this function? And why is it complaining here? So here it's saying cannot find function, find bin utils, right? So, yeah. Oh, once again, yeah, this is also something that we could actually share uh, between, between the different modules. Uh, let's see, so this is coming from here. Yeah, we could, we could also do something like use create and whatnot. Um, yeah, let, let's also just copy that for now. I want to uh, think about it a bit and uh, put that in place later. So yeah, but I will leave the same note of like fix me, factor out, rework and share. Um, of course, there is some more involvement. Oh, look at that. Even more functions. So what does this do? It's uh, it's invoking a few a few implementations of linkers. So, or, uh, well, uh, in, in this instance, it's opt copy, it's not LD. But what, what I mean is um, you could technically use a different one. So you could use the Rust thing, the RISC-564 unknown elf, or the RISC-564 Linux GNU. Um, all of these can be available for you. So if you, uh, I know, so you write rest something, it could be that you have this opt copy here, right? It can be that you have, uh, well, this here, <laughs> you already see the auto completion here, uh, risk 564 Linux GNU opt. Well, this here was opt dump, but it's also available for opt copy. All of that is always part of the same tool chain or not, not always, but usually, um, yeah, and the same thing also exists with uh, RISC-564 unknown elf. Yeah, 
So yeah, there, there are different variants of those tool chains out there. Anyway, so now that we got this part, um, there was something else complaining, I think. Or was that everything? Yeah, let, let's see if this works. Oh no, it doesn't work yet. Okay, so we still need one more helper. We need this dir. So this dir is coming from our crate again. So it's actually defined here in the main file. Oh, right, and here we don't need to pass features, but instead we pass arc.env. All right, so one last thing missing, uh, default target. So we need to define a default target. Where is default target defined? Um, it's coming from here, right. That should, I think, I think we should be able to push that to a different place. Maybe it shouldn't be necessary at all. Um, yeah, whatever. Let's just also put it here in somehow the same spot. All right. So now we got that part. Let's rerun again. And now we should finally get uh, not only the elf file, so not only this file, but we should also get the uh, bin file here. Oh, but it's a bit unhappy. No such file or directory. So, um, sorry, we were looking for this here, right? So, because it's not called orboot nor job bt zero. It's actually called, well, we didn't even call it Orboot Vision 5.1, but I think we call it, let's look at the directory listing again. We call it star 5 vision 5.1. Yeah, that should be it. And then we can also, Follow the same naming pattern here. And let's see if that builds now. And maybe I should add something so here I can, so I can play some music here or something. Okay, so, ah, look at this. Uh, opt copy binary prefixed Rust, so yeah, it was using Rust opt copy. Nice. Opt copy return exit status, exit status zero. So that means success. And oh, well, we need to look at the directory listing. So, ah, lo and behold, 2044, that is a fresh build. So with this here, now we should actually be able to run this, right? So if we use the JH7100 recover tools, um, we should be able to say, run this file, oopsie. And let's see what happens. Do we get anything? Yes, we do. So that worked. So we get our boot and we get our second crab that we just added for you know, the sake of seeing uh, a different build. All right, so uh, let's commit this here. So we're saying git add x task. So we say x task store five Vision 5.1, build BT0 stage. All right. 
Nice. So I uh, explicitly added only X test because we also made another change and I made another small one. So I, I removed this here uh, where we uh, did this um, you are right L. Um, that was for debugging. At some point, we don't need it currently. So we can actually uh, do a checkout on that file um, because we don't really need the change. Or we can just undo it here. Let's just undo it here. And then commit that thing again as well. So this is our five vision five. Uh, Remove, debug, so whatever. It doesn't really matter too much right now. I just wanted to get rid of this thing. All right. So now that we were able to build one stage, um, let's actually have a look again at the directory listing uh, because I want to talk about this here. So look, uh, this first stage is now 5.1K in size. Um, and we recall we have 16k of SRAM, so we're actually only using roughly a third, but less than a third of our capacity. And we also talked about um, that we wanted to also have the DRAM initialization in here, right? And now the question is, when we load the DRAM stage, what's the size of it actually? So uh, we can read that from here. So what we do is uh, here, uh, we're actually printing uh, what we're reading from the spy flash and I think this here uh, should be the size of the DRAM blob. Um, yeah, let's, let's actually do that verbose. So uh, let's say we want to print the size of the uh, DRAM blob. So we have that here, DRAM blob size, right? And uh, yeah, it's, it's funny enough uh, that we're dumping this, but we're not printing the DRAM blob size. So let's do another print LN. Uh, so DRAM blob size and this. There we go. So we, we can do this now. Uh, we, we can we can rebuild and rerun, right? So we would need this command. Uh, we would need the cargo command. Yeah, but we want to have more convenience after all. So we're going to uh, make this one command eventually so that we can just say cargo x task, whatever. Um, so let's run this now. But then I want to get back to uh, talking about the different stages and so on. So yeah, this is now Oh, look, um, I wasn't actually printing a new line here, which is interesting because I thought I was using print ln. Uh, apparently, the new line is not yet included. Maybe we need to work a bit on the, um, on the print ln macro. Yeah, let's do it this way for now. Doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we just want the information, right? So let's see what we get. So we get eight, seven, five, six, three. So that would be roughly 87K. And here, uh, that was like 5K. That sounds a bit small actually. Um, maybe this is compressed or something, I don't know. So let's look at our direct directory listing again. No, it is actually 
Oh, huh. I was actually completely wrong. I thought we were using a third, but that's, oh wait, we have 16K, right? So that is actually just a third. Um, so 16K plus 87K would be a bit too much. So we currently, currently, we cannot fit this uh, in our first stage because this is what I wanted to figure out, right? Can we actually fit our uh, current DRAM blob and just squeeze that, you know, into our uh, BT0 stage. Um, so yeah, that's that's actually the ugly part that uh, I wanted to replace anyway, uh, but it will be uh, quite a lot of work. And since we don't have documentation for the DRAM controller, um, yeah, it will be uh, a very unpleasant job to do. Um, yeah. So instead of that, um, let's then do the following. So I, eventually I would like to be able to build something uh, that we can just uh, write to the spy flash and then run from the spy flash or we can uh, write to SRAM and run from SRAM. And I would actually like to have everything uh, that would be part of Orboot and that would be uh, the the initial uh, thing that is BT0, including the DRAM in it. And then after that, um, the SBI implementation, which then switches to the full operating system. So yeah, in, in our case, that would be Linux boot and then Linux boot can take care of everything else. And Linux boot would just be residing in Flash. But everything else uh, should technically be able to fit in SRAM because it's really not that much. So yeah, the question is, um, what do we do next? Um, so stitching everything together is again a bit more uh, complicated than I was hoping for. Uh, what we can do still is we can define the um, second function uh, for compiling another uh, stage in Orbit. So this is what I wanted to have done today anyway. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to extend this here. So instead of just having BT0 here, we're going to build the other stages as well. So here we're going to say build main and then flash main. So would be the same as here. Um, and if you look at this here, uh, we have these two more stages. So one is called finalize and another one is called concat. So in this finalize, oh, there is a typo here. Never mind the typo. Um, <coughs> this finalize stage here uh, is doing something that we need to do for uh, the D1 where we need to write um, an additional header uh, you know, for the D1, there is, uh, that's coming from all winner essentially. It's also true for other SOCs. You would need to have a certain header with, uh, you know, some metadata and so on. So that is happening in that stage. Um, yeah, you, you, can, uh, you can sort of see that here. So yeah, it's uh, seeking through the file. You know, it's, it's writing some things here. Um, and we would need to do something similar for the file that we want to write in Flash. So we would just need to prepend our um, our blob size, right? So yeah, what, what I did in a bit of a hacky script last time. So yeah, but um, that's for later. First, I want to actually have the second stage. So yeah, let's actually define those two functions now also. So uh, besides BT0, let's also define a main function. So what I'm going to do now is essentially just just copy the other one, I guess, because it shouldn't be much different. It's just running for a different directory, right? So, yeah, it's doing this here. Uh, hang on. So what's the other function? Yeah, first we're looking at this here. Give me a second.
All right. So yeah, we want to um, essentially do the same thing as here again. That's actually quite interesting if we look at this here, also in comparison uh, against the BT0 stage. Where is the BT0 stage? This here. So what we see on the top here and what we see below should essentially be very much the same code again, right? So yeah, again, we're saying uh, we give a trace print. We're uh, assigning this here cargo, another trace print. Uh, we're building up the command. We're just using a different directory name. So yeah, instead of BT0, we're saying main. And then we're printing the output from cargo. Uh, but here, Oh, we were allowing to pass on features. Yeah, we don't have that yet for the second stage, but it, yeah, as I, as I said, it doesn't really matter right now. That's for later. Uh, let's just again copy a function. Instead of V1, it's JH7100. Everything else looks fine. Yeah, again, we don't actually have flash in here. Yeah, let's actually do that. Let's actually just put flash in here and there as well. Just makes things a bit easier. Oh, it's a bit unhappy about features. Ah, because we're not using features here. Right. Doesn't look nice now, but it's at least uh, at least it's consistent. Um, so yeah, the other function. Let's close that. So that was build main, and now we need binary main. So binary main goes here. Uh, build and then binary. One hundred. Come on. And again, we need to adjust the file name. So here we would have sort five vision vision five one. Also here. All right, and now when we run this, uh, we will get an error because we don't actually have a main stage yet. The directory doesn't even exist. So um, we will need to do that. Uh, we will need to create a main directory because currently we have no such directory. So let's do that real quick and dirty. Um, Let's look at the BT0 directory. So what do we have here? We list everything. So we have a .cargo directory. We have a cargo toml file. Uh, and we have a source directory. And in the source directory, we also have files again. So let's first of all make the main directory and the source directory. Say dash p, so it's uh, doing it recursively. Okay, um, now we can we can just copy from BT0. We can just copy the cargo toml file to main. And we're going to make a bit of an adjustment. So here, it's not BT0 anymore, but it's main. Okay, sounds good. Um, 
do we have a short version of the pt zero source main file? Like, can we can we like reduce this somehow? Hmm. Yeah, technically we can just use the entry there. I, I think we can even drop this here at some point. Um, yeah, let's just copy the whole file, make an empty main function, and that should be it. Right, so yeah, we just we just copy from bt0 to main. Uh, we're copying source main. So now we just remove this here because we don't need it right now. Um, yeah, all of this here is currently not yet necessary. We will have an empty main function, very empty main function. Uh, yeah, the panic handler is also something we can do later. Uh, yeah, we don't have this yet. We don't have the modules yet. Well, we, we, we could do this fancy part, right? So this was like our um, our little debug function, so we were just printing something to the UART. Um, so what we could do now is uh, just just for the sake of testing this whole thing. Um, so first of all, we can now build this, hopefully, except we got an error. Um, so yeah, that is something uh, to be fixed. But besides that, um, what we can do is we can concatenate everything uh, into one file um, that we then put in SRAM. And instead of uh, the current BT0, instead of just um, loading further parts from the spy flash into DRAM and running it, so what we, or, or to SRAM and running it, um, so what we did with the uh, binary for the DRAM in it, we could just jump to the main stage instead, right? So we just need to have a bit of a convention of um, where we put it. Um, but yeah, first of all, we would need to be able to build that thing. So look, um, we are getting errors about nose. Oh, I remember. Right, so remember this here, cargo, and we also got a build.rs. Um, so first of all, let's look at the cargo directory. You see, we're using this here. Um, we're using this target and so on. And we're passing some linker flags. So this is something we also need to copy actually. So we can copy again, or we do it recursively. Uh, we're copying the cargo subdirectory. Does it build now? No, it still doesn't build. Uh, ah, right. Yeah, so it says current find linker script. Um, so in BT0, uh, we have something called build.rs. And in build.rs, we actually have the linker script defined, so we also need to copy that over. Yeah, and uh, another candidate for sharing uh, code. So yeah, build.rs, I think it's also just invoked by convention, right? So that is now, that has run now. And so if we now look at the output directory, now we got another binary. So we got this here, this L file, store 5 vision 5 one main, and the main.bin file, well, this is, 78 bytes and those 78 bytes are really just the stupid few assembly instructions that we have in there because you know we just have an empty main function um, 
Oh, we can actually look at that bin file uh, in XXD, for example, and you will see it's, it's really just these very, very few instructions. Nice. But anyway, so um, we uh, just bootstrapped another stage, right? So what we're now going to do is uh, we're going to add that. So we're adding main. So now we can say bootstrap main stage. And again, push that. Yeah. And uh, I think we will uh, leave it at this point here. So yeah, what did we achieve today? So we, um, we set up uh, the access framework so that we can actually uh, build our binary using uh, cargo access now uh, for the vision 5.1 and we bootstrapped another stage which is the main stage uh, which now allows uh, allows us to actually have the multiple stages um, yeah and so next time uh, we will take care of some stitching and so on now just for an announcement uh, I will take another uh, short break again so there won't be a stream next week, uh, but yeah, we'll see you again in two weeks then. And that's where we continue with this next stage. And until then, um, I will see that I can figure out some uh, strategies for uh, actually uh, running uh, our whole code now, because as I said, it's a bit uh, more involved now with uh, stitching things together. Um, yeah, I, I will take care of that. Um, it might be that we will actually benefit from now writing our own tool again for flashing. Um, yeah, but we, we will see about that. Anyway, thank you very much for joining again. Take care and see you next time.